Are you ready? All right, graders ready? Okay, Spencer, the floor is yours whenever you're ready. Okay. So as I'm sure everyone in this room is aware, this is a frying pan. Now, this is actually my old frying pan. I replaced it perhaps a month ago with a new one. As you can see, this one's pretty chewed up. Um, the anti-stick coating is pretty much gone on the bottom, and the other side would probably start a fire if I used it on a gas stove. Now, um, I bring this up because while most of you know what this is, statistics show that almost none of you know how to use one, or at least use one well. Now, starting in the 70s, there was a strong decline in the rate of cooking in the United States. And there are a number of reasons for that, but the biggest was the decline of home ec in schools. Now, it used to be once upon a time that every young woman in the United States had to take home ec. Now, as a result of various factors, uh, that's not a requirement anymore. But I do think that they had it the wrong way around. Rather than having home ec be a requirement for absolutely no one, it should be a requirement for everyone. You see, I think everyone needs to learn how to cook. Now, I'd like to make this point in a couple of ways. I'm going to give you a specific example of when cooking is better in virtually every way than going to a fast food restaurant or making a pre-prepared meal. But first I'm going to give you a little bit of background on the correlation between the decline of cooking in the United States and other countries and the rise uh, in obesity rates. So in 1965, an American household uh, spent about two hours a day on cooking, according to Dr. David Cutler from Cambridge, uh, Cambridge University. Today, that's declined to about 33 minutes. There's a number of reasons for this, um, including the rise of microwave ovens. According to Dr. Cutler, now about 90% of households in the United States have a microwave and they use it for most of their food preparation. And you can kind of see the result of this. As the cooking uh, rate has declined, the rate of obesity has gone up. In 1970, around the time when microwaves became widely available, only about 8% of adults in the United States uh, were obese. Today, that's 35.7% or more than one in three. Now, Obesity has a number of significant drawbacks, and it's, it's not the purpose of this speech for me to get into those, but it includes increased rate of soft tissue cancers, uh, diabetes, heart disease, all kinds of things. These are the biggest killers in our society today. Now, I'd like to compare the situation today in the United States to Italy, again, today. They have a 9.3% obesity rate, maybe about between 25% and one-third of what it is in the United States. By comparison, they spend 52 minutes a day cooking, about 19 minutes longer. It's not really that long. But the biggest difference is how many people, how many households in Italy actually have microwaves. And that's about 14%, according to Dr. Cutler. Now, this isn't just a coincidence. This is true over every single country where data on cooking is available. Dr. Cutler did a study and found that there is a strong correlation between the amount of time a country spends cooking and the uh, body mass index, which is a common measure used to measure the average body fat of a person, uh, across every single country. They found that um, just 15 minutes extra spent cooking correlates to a 0.5, re or a 0.5 reduction in the body mass index, which amounts to, on a typical person, between 3 and 8 pounds of weight loss. Now, I've told you a little bit about the background of, on the correlation between um, weight gain and not cooking. Now I'd like to give you a, an example of how you can make something at home and have it not be, you know, eating acorns or something. That's a common uh, misconception about cooking. In order to have it be a benefit, you have to cook healthy. Now, um, who here likes cheeseburgers? Yeah, pretty much everyone. We're, we're a country that loves cheeseburgers. Now, I went out to the McDonald's website and I dug up the nutrition facts for the double quarter pounder with cheese, which is one of their best selling items. And this is, it's quite grim actually. Uh, just the burger, no fries, no soda, is 750 calories and 43 grams of fat. Pretty, pretty nasty stuff here. Now, um, 
using the wonder of the internet, I was able to use a tool called Wolfram Alpha, which essentially allows you to put in a recipe, and uh, it, it'll put out a nutrition label for whatever you made. Now, I did this for my recipe for cheeseburgers, which I want to be clear, I fry cheeseburgers in butter. I make no effort to make them <laughs> terribly healthy. Now, I came back with a half pound cheeseburger with real cheddar cheese, bun, everything, same condiments, and I came back with 550 calories and 30 grams of fat, which is significantly less than the McDonald's double quarter pounder with cheese. And this, this is due to a number of factors, but the biggest reason is you can't go to the supermarket and buy ingredients that are as low quality as McDonald's uses. And they're one of the better fast food restaurants. So I've told you a little bit about how simply making something yourself, even something that's not really health food, can make your, uh, uh, can improve your health outcomes. But there's another common misconception, that in order to cook these sorts of meals yourself, you have to break the bank. Now, that double quarter pounder with cheese from McDonald's is, according to the McDonald's website, $4.90. Now, I dug up an old receipt from when last time I made cheeseburgers for my girlfriend and I, and I found that the total cost of all the ingredients was $9.74 which comes out to $2.44 each, or about half of the McDonald's equivalent. Now that, that's really not McDonald's being cheaper here, I think we can all agree. And I timed myself, and I found that it took me 22 minutes to make four cheeseburgers, which isn't really very much time at all. And after that, I can use my microwave to reheat those. In order to, make four, in order to go to McDonald's and get four cheeseburgers, you'd have to be a pretty fast driver to get it done in 22 minutes. So in conclusion, I've told you a little bit about the correlation between cooking and obesity and how as cooking in the United States declined, obesity increased. And I've given you a specific example of how cooking uh, can save you money and uh, allow you to eat healthier without changing really anything about your diet. So i just like to say, uh, Knowing how to use this could someday save your life, or, you know, maybe just save you a few dollars. Thank you.